Welcome to Electrum Online. In the last couple of videos we were exploring the effect of sample size as well as test statistic to determine whether or not we should reject or not reject a null hypothesis. Our example involved water polo players and the claim was that the average size of water polo players was equal to 100 kilograms with a standard deviation of 5 kilograms. And the null hypothesis claimed that the average size of players was equal to 100 kilograms, which essentially meant equal to or less than 100 kilograms because we're using a one-tailed test. And then the alternate hypothesis is that the average size of players is greater than 100 kilograms. So we kept on increasing the size of the sample while keeping the sample mean the same at 105 kilograms. And we saw that by the time we had a sample size large enough of three or greater, we began to reject the null hypothesis because we had enough confidence with a sample size of three or greater and an average or a mean of the sample of 105 that that was sufficient evidence that the average size of water polo players was greater than 100 kilograms. But now let's take two more samples and let's say in this case each of the samples indicate that the average of the sample is 102 kilograms which means it's not that much different than the average of the general population, at least the one that was assumed. And so now is a sample size of 9 sufficiently large with a smaller mean closer to the mean of the population to reject and not reject the null hypothesis. So let's find out. And so we recalculated the test statistic. Notice that the difference now is between 102 and 100, which is 2, divided by the standard deviation, which is 0.4, times the square root of the sample size of 9, which is 3, and we get a test statistic equal to 1.2, which means that the test statistic is smaller than the z-score. If it's smaller, it didn't make it into the critical region, and therefore we're not going to reject the null hypothesis. We failed to reject it because the test statistic did not move into the critical region. So notice that there's two things at play. One is, what is the mean of the, of the sample? Two, what is the sample size? The two combined will move the test statistic back and forth and notice that if the difference is going to be smaller instead of 100 to 102, instead of going from 100 to 105, it's going from 100 to 102, the difference between the population mean and the sample mean, you need more so you can make a more confident decision. In other words, you need a larger sample size. You need more players, a larger sample size of random players that you picked in order to begin to claim that you can reject the null hypothesis. So nine in this case was not enough. So what happens when the mean of the sample is 102, but the sample size is now 36. So we made it four times as large from nine to 36. Notice that the test statistic can be calculated by taking the difference between the mean of the sample and the mean of the population divided by the standard deviation, which again, 0.4, and then multiply times the square root of the sample size, the square root of 36 is 6. 6 times 0 0.4 is 2.4, and now 2.4 is bigger than the z-score, which means that now the test statistic moves into the critical region, and therefore we can reject the null hypothesis. So even though the difference in the mean between the population and the sample is relatively small, it's only 2 from 100 to 102, you would think, ah, oh, that's so close, can you really reject the null hypothesis? But it was based on a sample size of 36, which means that that difference of 2 was really significant, and at the level of significance of 5%, it was enough with a sample of 36 to push the test statistic into the critical region and therefore we rejected the null hypothesis. We therefore can accept the alternate hypothesis, hypothesis that the average size of players is greater than 100 kilograms. So the initial claim that the average was 100 is being negated by this one test, sample size of 36. Now how confident are we? Well, we had a level of significance of 5%, so the confidence level that we made the right decision in doing so is 95%. That's pretty good, but it still leaves a little bit of room that that might have been the wrong decision. But 95% confidence that we made the right decision because the level of significance was 5%, that's pretty good. And notice that the test statistic was quite a bit 
into the critical region, not right at the border, but quite a bit into, then we feel pretty confident that we probably made the right decision. And that is how it's done. And again, this was correct. <laughs> so I say. <laughs>